What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Alex Pereira gets disrespected by Magomed Ankalaev. A ton of people believe that Magomed Ankalaev is the toughest matchup for Alex Pereira in the light heavyweight division. So much so, some have questioned if the UFC went out of their way to avoid having Poetan fight the Dagestani earlier. But recently, Ankalaev made it crystal clear he believes he's going to have a tougher time at UFC 308 than if and when he battles Pereira. It wasn't long ago when the consensus was Ankalaev would be next for Poetan, on account of the fact that he hasn't lost a scrap since 2018. But ultimately, the UFC booked Ankalaev to fight Alexander Rakic at UFC 308 on October 26, while Pereira was tapped to fight Khalil Roundtree Jr. at UFC 307. Well, now that Pereira has defeated Roundtree Jr., the focus has shifted back to Ankalaev and his next scrap. Recently, however, the decorated Sambo competitor took some digs at Pereira by claiming Rakic is going to pose a bigger threat. Via social media, Ankalaev shared out this. Just to be clear, Rakic is my toughest fight in division. Chael Sonnen, you are right, my friend. My toughest fight in the division is Rakic. My easiest fight ever was Anthony Smith. I hit him with a combination from a video game I used to play when I was 12. While some people have written off Rakic in his upcoming fight with Ankalaev, Sonnen has repeatedly praised the Austrian fighter for his abilities. Case in point, not long ago, Sonnen had this to say about the Ankalaev Rakic fight via his YouTube channel. You've got Ankalaev, clearly the number one contender, at least according to you guys, and you know what? I do have a little bit of a problem with that. It's not a huge problem, but I do have just a little one, which is Rakic is that damn good. You gotta understand, Rakic did not get a world title fight. Well, neither did Ankalaev, but Rakic did find himself in the next best thing. I'm only telling you this because that's how good Rakic is, and a lot of people have forgot. Rakic looked good the night he lost to Prohaska, but he looked like a guy who had been out for a minute of time. His conditioning wasn't gonna be right where he wants it, and there was no way to manufacture that. Do you agree with Ankalaev? Is Rakic a tougher matchup for him? And does he really believe that? Or is he just trolling Poetan? Up next, Joaquin Buckley fires back at Kamaru Usman. Following his impressive win over Stephen Thompson at UFC 307 earlier this month, Joaquin Buckley wasted little time before calling out Kamaru Usman. While Usman proceeded to shoot down the call out, Buckley isn't letting up in his campaign to scrap the former champion. With the win over Wonderboy, Buckley extended his winning streak to five and served notice to the welterweight division that he's on the cusp of title contention. After all, Thompson was a top-ranked welterweight for years, so after Buckley called for a fight with Usman, the renowned fighter told the powerful contender to get in line. That prompted a fired-up Buckley to tell Parry Punch News this. He's just waiting on the opportunity just to have that big fight, which is, you know, fight for a title. But my thing is that shouldn't be given to you, bro. You should work for that. Just because you uh, been a former champion, just because you held the belt, you know what I'm saying, for a good amount of time, doesn't give you the right to come back, you know what I'm saying, and just be like, all right, I get to fight for the belt again. You still not account those three losses that you didn't have. So prove to the world that you still have the ability to fight for a belt. You can certainly understand why Buckley is trying to land this fight, and the fact that he's doing so shows a lot about his confidence. Usman is one of the best welterweights of this generation, but will Buckley get his wish? Given he's currently ranked number 9 and Usman is sitting in the number 2 spot, it seems unlikely at the moment. At this stage of the game, for the 37-year-old Usman, he really doesn't have much to gain by fighting Buckley, unless it would guarantee him another shot at the belt. Okay, now let's take a look at Corey Sanhagen talks about fighting Sean O'Malley. Corey Sanhagen continues to campaign for a showdown with Sean O'Malley, even if that means he spends most of 2025's H1 on the sidelines. Following Sanhagen's decision loss to Umar Nurmagomedov in August, and O'Malley's more recent loss to Marab Devishvili, the Bantamweight repeatedly called for a scrap with Sugar. The problem is, however, that O'Malley recently underwent hip surgery, and the former champion's not expected to fight again until early next summer. But while talking to Michael Bisping recently, Sam Hagen reported he's actually down to wait for O'Malley since there's a lot of buzz about this fight. That's the fight that everyone wants to see happen. And I know Sean wants to wait to June. I'm actually kind of surprised that the UFC hasn't come to me or Sean hasn't said anything about that fight yet or anything and just asked, you know, like, hey, you willing to wait till June? Because I would entertain that big time because I think a big piece that I've really been able to appreciate lately in the sport is that uh, I really want to give the fans like what they're paying to see. And if it means waiting a little bit to fight in a fight where fans are most excited for, uh, you know, like I would definitely big time entertain that. I, I would rather not have it be all the way in June, but I mean, there's no better fight that you can make. This is pretty interesting to hear from Sanhagen because if the UFC does go this route, it would mean nearly a year would go by without him fighting. But that's the big question. Is this something the UFC or O'Malley will look at? It could very well depend on what happens with the expected bout between Tavishvili and Nurmagomedov. The belief is that those two will fight in the first quarter of 2025. If Marab wins, 
could the UFC look at giving O'Malley an immediate rematch? And further, does the UFC want to go that long without Sanhagen fighting? Given there's a UFC card almost every week and complaints of watered down cards, the promotion may call on Sanhagen to headline in the interim. UFC Updates Now let's take a look at some of the changes and fights the UFC's upcoming schedule has received. First up, today's UFC Vegas 98 card will not feature a middleweight bout between Abdul Razak Al Hassan and Josh Fremen. Fremen weighed several pounds overweight and eventually officials announced the scrap was off. It's an unfortunate hit to the card, as it had the markings of a spirited fight, not only because of each man's style, but because both fighters need to string some wins together. Josh Fremen was hospitalized after weighing in, causing his fight at UFC Vegas 98 to be cancelled. He posted on his story saying, My fight for tomorrow is off. I was taken to the hospital after weigh-ins. Massive apology to my opponent, the UFC, and my team. A lot of work and time was put into this camp, and I'm heartbroken. UFC Vegas 100 has its headlining fight, as the November 9th card will see longtime welterweight contender Neil Magny take on the surging Carlos Prates. Magny is coming off a quick and tough loss to Michael Morales, but before that, he showed he can still hang with notable competition as he stopped Mike Mallet. Prates, meanwhile, is rocketing towards the top 15 of the division as he's won 12 straight. And Johnny Walker has booked his next fight, as Octagon Update is reporting the light heavyweight has agreed to fight Bogdan Guskov on January 11th. This could be a must-win situation for the charismatic Walker, as he's winless in three fights and has been bombed out in his last two scraps. Granted, the losses came against contenders Volkan Uzdemir and Magomed Ankalaev, but a defeat to Guskov will be another devastating setback. Meanwhile, Guskov is coming off back-to-back -back wins and is sitting in the number 14 ranking at 205. And speaking of the UFC's January 11th card, RFM Europe is reporting that Ernesta Karakate will fight Nicola Cagliari at the UFC Vegas event. Karakate is looking to get back on track as the flyweight is coming off a decision loss to Dion Barboza, which was her first pro defeat. Cagliari, on the other hand, will be making her official UFC debut after locking up a UFC deal via Dana White's Contender Series. Finally, rising and undefeated middleweight Sharabuddin Magomedov has reportedly inked a six-fight extension with the UFC, ahead of his October 26 scrap with Armin Petrosian. Given the buzz Magomedov has been generating with fans, it's not surprising to hear the UFC wanted to ensure he's locked up contractually for a while. Daniel Cormier praises Ilya Topuria for trash talk. Ilya Topuria has been making headlines and turning heads with some of the things he's been saying ahead of UFC 308, and Daniel Cormier is all in. Even before Topuria put away Alexander Volkanovsky in February to secure the featherweight crown, he certainly wasn't shy about sharing his confidence, but in more recent months, the rising star seems to be wrapping up the trash talk. Case in point, during a recent interview alongside Max Holloway, he acknowledged he was a fan of Blessed, but warned he's going to be the first man to knock him out. During a more recent episode of the Good Guy Bad Guy podcast, Cormier outlined why he thinks Topuria's comments worked. Here's for me why this worked. You got to see Max Holloway a little bit mad. It felt like Ilya Topuria has now gotten to the point where Max doesn't like him. He respected Max in his career path and the things that he did. I don't know that now. He respects him in that way, and I think it's very smart of Topuria not to hold that respect and have that for Max Holloway. Because the last guy that Max Holloway fought in Justin Gagey, who liked Max, had no bad feelings toward Max. He said he couldn't get himself ready because Max is a great guy. Everybody loves Max. Max Holloway put him out with one of the most devastating knockouts we've seen in a really long time. Topuria is not having any of that. Ilya Topuria is saying, I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to put you into retirement. He said he put Volk into retirement already. This dude Ilya is so confident. But why wouldn't he be? He's the world champion. What do you think of Topuria's comments? Do you agree with Cormier's take here? Or should the champ dial it back? Bilal Muhammad is ready to fight in December. Bilal Muhammad opted to take a bit of time off after he ended the reign of Leon Edwards in July. But according to his manager Ali Abdelaziz, the welterweight champion is down to defend his belt in December. Not that long after Muhammad beat Edwards at UFC 304, Shavka Rachmanov claimed that the champion turned down a fight with him at UFC 307. Muhammad proceeded to acknowledge he wanted to take a bit of time off, rather than jumping right back into camp. Well, while speaking to MMA Fighting more recently, Abdelaziz reported this. Bilal is ready to go in December. No problem. We're ready to go, but the UFC has to announce. I can't be announcing a fight on your podcast. Most likely, you're going to see for sure Bilal in December. Against who, where, when, this is a Dana White question. It can be Shavka Rachmanov, it can be Kamar Usman, it can be whatever the UFC wants. I said if you're the champ, you have to defend the title against whoever they're going to give you. It doesn't matter who. So given UFC 310 on December 7th still doesn't have a main event, it wouldn't be surprising if the promotion looked at having Muhammad vs. Rachmanov for that card. Is it enough of a big fight for the promotion's last pay-per-view of the year? It's a fair question, but given most of the promotion's champions have already fought or are expected to fight in 2025, it could be the UFC's best option right now. Mario Bautista fires back at the MMA community for Jose Aldo fight. 
Mario Bautista is continued to take heat for the approach he took in his tightly contested and much debated fight with Jose Aldo, but according to the rising bantamweight, his critics should also be taking a look at Aldo. Bautista faced the legendary Aldo at UFC 307 and emerged with a split decision win. A big reason some fans have been piling on Bautista is because he repeatedly initiated clinches with Aldo. In addition, he went 0 for 10 in takedown attempts, so more than a few observers have argued Aldo should have been awarded the win. Well, while speaking to MMA Junkie more recently, Bautista outlined why he took that approach and why he thinks Aldo should also be criticized. I just wanted him to keep on working. I just wanted him to break out of the clinch, use that energy to get out, and then just kind of stay stuck to him. Just keep him working, working. I just didn't really think he was going to. I don't know. I guess just stay on the wall? I thought he was going to get out because that takes up some energy. There are points where I felt, yeah, he was defending the takedown and maybe he could have circled off, but he just kind of chose to stay there and kind of wait a little bit. Yeah, I was holding him against the cage, but at the same time, I think he did have opportunities to circle off. It's just, he chose not to. Those comments probably won't sit too well with Aldo's camp or his supporters, but what do you think? Could Aldo have done more work out of the positions, or is Bautista offering up a lame excuse? Dana White gets accused of paying off a judge in a lawsuit. Mark Hunt took to Twitter to call out the UFC and Dana White, tweeting, Learning law makes me crazy. I take my hat off to those in this field, but I wonder how much money. Did you take Christina Denning and Brian Bashi to sabotage my case 10 million, 20 million? And I wonder which scumbag paid you off. Was it Dana White, Hunter Campbell, or someone else? I'm really looking forward to oral argument. <laughs> <laughs> John Jones gives advice to his training partners in a new video. My home 20s. I'm going home with a headache all the time. And now when that happens, I get really upset. I feel like I did something wrong. Really, really try to protect that brain, man, because after you get punched in the head enough times, your ability to see things coming goes away. I've been teammates with guys who you couldn't hit. And then towards the end of their career, they couldn't stop a jab. They just couldn't stop it. Your ability to, like, for your brain to process and to react quickly goes away the more you get hit. Really, really. I've, I've had teammates, um, they're not the bad mouth, but one of my teammates, John Dotson, he would get punched and he would go, <laughs> hit me some more. And I never thought that was funny. And I'm like, John, I would watch him put his hands down and like, watch, let people hit him and hit him and hit him. He's a rare exception. Because he still moves great, and he still talks great, and doesn't stutter, and, and, you know, he's a rare exception, but for the most part, he definitely want to protect that. Top comments. I'm sick of fighters retiring and then coming back after a year or two. I can already imagine DDP walking out the press conference with this picture on his shirt. Nice to see Khalil take the loss like a warrior. Jamal should take notes, both on the performance and taking a loss like a true warrior. Jorge, who cares Masvidal versus Connor, who cares McGregor? Yeah, who cares? Hooker was spent after the diamond encounter, but Dustin stated he didn't want that heat again with the hangman. We need Gagey Poirier 3.